I'd like you to take a look at this gun. It's handcrafted to my specifications. Balance is excellent. The trigger responds to a pressure of one ounce. I'm quite familiar with the piece. Perhaps we could talk about this? I rarely draw it unless I mean to use it. Care for a demonstration? Freeze program. Was she everything I promised, sir? And more. I've never seen a holographic program this detailed before. I swear I could almost smell the gun oil. I, well, she's still in the experimental stage, but once we get the bugs out... Bridge to Captain Kirk. Kirk here. We've arrived at the first of the power stations that have gone offline, Captain. I'll be right there. All right. Playtime's over. Let's get back to work. Report spot. Starfleet's communique was accurate. All three power stations in this system are completely drained. Any idea what caused it? I likely the Klingon sealing fuel cells again. There is no evidence to support that theory, Mr. Scott. That's because it wasn't a theory. It was a joke. The power stations were anchored in this system with the purpose of providing energy and fuel for passing Federation ships. And what would cause a failure on that scale? Unknown. If theft was intended, it would be far more efficient to steal the stations themselves as opposed to siphoning them one by one. Captain, I'm registering a minor drain on engine power. Scotty? Checking. Aye. Slight, but noticeable. Any danger? Not yet, sir, but I don't like it. I can't even tell you what's causing it. All right. Spock, scan the station for any clues to the power loss. Captain, I'm reading something 320,000 kilometers off the starboard bow. Put it on screen. What the devil? Spock? Unknown. Sulu, bring us around. Scotty, shields up. Shields not responding. Our drain is accelerated. The source of the drain is the anomaly directly in front of us. Can we do anything about it? Unknown. Ship systems, including life support, at 54% and falling. What is it? A machine? An organism? Unknown. That's an awful lot of unknowns, Mr. Spock. I need answers. Go to red alert. Sulu, put some distance between us. Back away. Engines aren't responding, Captain. I can't seem to... Whoop drive and impulse engines are offline. Uhura, anything? Nothing, sir. I've tried friendship messages on all known hailing frequencies. Ship's power now is 29%. She's fading fast. Not without a fight. Ready phasers. We don't have enough power for phasers, sir. I had to repair everything we had to life support. Photon torpedoes, then. Aye, you might be able to get off one shot, but there is no telling it. Lock photon torpedo on. Dead center. Torpedo locked. Fire. 20 seconds to impact. Power levels at 14%. Captain, I'm detecting two life forms in the center of the anomaly. Life forms? Jim, readings are very faint, but definite. Jim, you don't know anything about them. They could need our help. Scotty, transport. Oh, no way, sir. Power level's at 9%. Impact in five seconds. Jim, we're out of options, but you don't know it. Impact! Report. Power levels at 12%. 19%. Increasing steadily. All decks reporting in. No casualties. Our torpedo broke off small pieces of the anomaly. The bulk is still intact, but it is no longer a viable threat. I detect no life forms. Cancel red alert. I'm sorry, Bones. But it couldn't be helped. I know, Jim. It's just hard to see the taking of any life, even if it's to save our own. 24%. 31%. Still climbing. Captain, I'm detecting an energy buildup. Focused within the Enterprise. Can you identify an exact location? The bridge.
face the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Captain's log started 6147.3. It's been nearly two years since the alien called Apollo from Earth's ancient history tried to enslave us on Pollux 4. Now, a much older Apollo has reappeared, only this time, on board the Enterprise. Security to the bridge, on the double. Apollo. A thousand years. In a day. Rest, dearest. We continue because of you. You continue. I am pleased. The final image my eyes behold is that of your face. No. We're safe together. You can't go. I forbid it. Live on for us. Sleep, dwell upon thine eyes. Peace in thy breast. Would I would sleep in peace. So sweet to rest. Travel gently. Beloved Athena. Where did she go? I don't know. Emptiness. Don't know what I can do for him, but let's get him to sick bay. Sir, you're not actually going to. Power stabilized, sir. Shield's output is increasing, but... But? Well, pieces of whatever that thing out there were, sir. I've hung to the ship's hull. Captain, if that debris clogs the intake manifolds... I sealed them, but we are stuck here until we can clear that debris. Readings indicate the material to be innocuous once hardened. There is, however, an unknown corrosive substance at their centers. Corrosive enough to eat through the hull? Possibly. <sighs> Suggestions, gentlemen. Oh, what a whop in the ring. We could go out on the hull with a couple hand phasers, cut the residue from the ship's exterior. Interesting strategy, Mr. Sulu. By setting phasers to the proper resonant frequency, we should be able to easily scrape it off the hull without damaging it. Aye, like sandpaper. But it's precision work. We can't afford any bumps. I think Chekhov can handle that. Well, Mr. Sulu, up for a little walk outside? Absolutely. Very well. You and Simone from Structural Engineering suit up and get it done. Aye, sir. Mr. Scott, we'll monitor the EVA from here. You look concerned, Mr. Spock? I am, Captain. I think Sulu knows what he's doing. 
It is not Sulu that concerns me. It is Apollo. Yes. I don't like him here one bit, but I feel somewhat responsible for him being here. Curious he has aged so rapidly in two years. Computer, analyze subject's age on screen. Working. Subject on screen's physiological age based on established norms between 38 and 41 Earth years. Now analyze the age of the subject currently in sickbay. Working. Subject in sick base physiological age based on established norms between 77 and 82 Earth years. I am at a loss to explain, Captain. Well, why don't we pay our guests a little visit and get some answers? Scotty, you've got the con. Captain, Dr. Elise McKenna, I was recently assigned no, to you from... No, not a good time, Doctor. How is he, Bones? Well, it's damn peculiar, Jim. I mean, his vitals are stable, for now. Can't tell how long, though, especially in the condition he's in. Condition? He's dying. Like any mortal human. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that organ I detected on Pollux 4? Yeah. It's still there, but it's barely detectable. I had to run two bioscans on him just to find it. Captain Kirk. So you remember me? Yes. You have extended an undeserved kindness considering our history. For that I am grateful. Don't mention it. What's the meaning of the attack on my ship? The attack was not my doing. When we sensed your weapon approaching, Athena sacrificed her last portion of energy to allow us both to escape the realm. Realm. It was conceived by our race eons ago to be a place of eternal respite. The realm was to provide the energy for us to live on through eternity. Clearly it did not operate as intended. No. Hera, Poseidon, and my beloved Artemis were the first to arrive. The realm drained them of their life energy until they were too weak to escape. A malfunction caused it to siphon power from any nearby energy source, whether organic or artificial. The power stations. And your rapid aging. Even a god without worship quickly withers. Because I waited for you, my children, I was the last to arrive. I was ill-prepared for what I discovered. They were dying. Yes. What was meant to be our sanctuary became our prison. One by one, my brothers and sisters slipped into oblivion, and I was powerless to save them. I sympathize, Apollo. But nothing has changed. We can't give you the worship you want. Much has changed. I no longer seek it. Time, who never dared to speak my name, now pursues me. Does that surprise you, even please you, to know that I fear passing into oblivion? No, it doesn't please us. But your presence on this ship is a great concern. Then hear my plea. I ask you to take me to a world where mortals exist. And I feel the warmth of the sun, the evening breeze on my face. No, so you can play God to another unsuspecting race? I swear upon all Olympus, upon the holy temple itself. I only desire to spend my remaining days among them as one of them. I'm afraid that's a big risk, and not one I'm prepared to take. To be a god for centuries, only to weaken and die alone. After my actions toward you, perhaps you believe that is what I deserve. Jim, perhaps we should let him rest. Check on Sulu's progress, and then I want to see the officers in the briefing room. Yes, sir. 
bones. Make sure Apollo is what he claims. What's that? Powerless. Captain! Captain! Uh, yes, Dr. McKenna, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. I'm very anxious to talk about this new of position. Of course you are. For the time being, I need you to help Dr. McCoy with our guest. I... Yes, sir. inside and use the shield array to scrape off the rest. You love this stuff, don't you? No matter how hard we train, I can't get used to assignments like this. Give me artificial gravity any day. <laughs> artificial gravity. I'm Dr. McKenna. Are you feeling up for some company? Company of a beautiful woman is always welcome. You are just as charming as she said you were. She? Lieutenant Palamas. Carolyn. Carolyn. The only mortal woman to ever spurn my love. Well, she did so out of dedication for her crewmates. She also said it was the most difficult thing she'd ever done. And why does she not declare this to me herself? She died. Carolyn, gone as well? After her experience with you, she decided to leave the ship. She died while helping some colonists who were infected by a plague. Such sacrifice by such beauty. She's even more than I immediately knew her to be. A rare treasure, McKenna. Elise. Reading increased hull temperature in your area. Reduce phaser strength by 20% to compensate. That's gonna slow us down. Aye, laddie. It will at that. But better to err on the side of caution, wouldn't you agree? <sighs> Simone, you heard him. Compensate. I'm trying. It's not working. Enterprise, we may have a problem out here. Tell me. Why didn't you and the other gods find another planet with humans where you could be worshipped? So deep was our love for humanity and our heartbreak when they rejected us. We couldn't bear the risk of such heartbreak again. Our only choice was the realm. Of all of us, none loved you humans more than I. Well, you must understand the captain's concerns. If only I could open up my heart and show him, show all of you. All I desire is life and peace. Easy-breasted. Better now. Scanny? Drain the powder, Captain. This was no bloody malfunction. That monster lying in sickbay, I lay odds on his doing. Apollo is in no condition well, to sir, do it. remember what he did to Carolyn, and now he's killed Simone. Everything was going as planned, Captain. Simone was trying to compensate. His phaser. I tried to help him, but there's nothing I could do! It's all right, Sulu. It's all right. Bones, he's okay. Bit shaken, but no permanent damage. I'm fine, Captain. But Simone... His body. We'll bring him home. 
you get some rest. Return to duty when you're feeling up to it, all right? Bones? Mm. Scotty, you're with me. It's him. He's to blame for all this. There's no reason to believe that this was anything more than a tragic accident. I tell you, he's behind us somehow. He wants us all on and he's praying to him. It would be illogical for Apollo to kill us, especially considering how desperate he seems for our help. I agree with Spock. A decision needs to be made about Apollo and what to do with him. As my senior officers, I'm bringing you in on that decision with me. Right now, Apollo's in no condition to do anything. Maybe what he claims is true. Dr. McCoy, you can't be serious. Simone would be alive right now if that creature hadn't come aboard. Dr. McCoy's point is valid. Apollo's appearance here could be, as he said, a matter of survival. He is now the last of his race. I sympathize, gentlemen. But not to the point where the safety of the crew is in jeopardy. We have no further facts at this time, Captain. And he hasn't demonstrated any aggressiveness toward anyone, Jim. We're the ones keeping him locked up in safe uh... Captain, if our objective is to determine Apollo's true intentions, perhaps it is time we, what is the saying, give him enough rope? Something like that. I don't believe it! That'll be enough, Mr. Scott. I sir. You'll excuse me. I need to continue repairing the damage caused by our guest. Scotty's not as forgiving as some, Jim. Seeing Apollo again has really reopened some old deep wounds. He doesn't trust him. I can't say I really blame him. Have the security detail accompany Apollo and allow him to walk about the ship a bit. And Spock. Yes, Captain. Make it a short leash. Many things have changed on your Earth over the centuries. Some things have not. Well, one thing has changed. I have one less crewman than I did an hour ago. Perhaps you can tell me how your realm managed to kill one of my men. I have little knowledge of this matter. That's Captain. not good enough. Look, if you want our help, you're going to have to start providing some answers. The realm thrives on energy. Survival became its sole purpose. Athena and I were its prisoners. Had your ship not been so close, we would have been unable to escape. Perhaps you have reconsidered my request. I have a responsibility to my Federation's non-interference directive. To allow someone with your history to descend upon some planet and set up church. Your history tapes show how humans have evolved as a species. Yet your Federation's promise of compassion and benevolence seem little more than words. Is that all you learned from our history? I assure you our decision will be a just one in the meantime. If you're feeling up to it, you may walk about the ship, get to know present-day humanity from some of its best representatives, my crew, accompanied by security, of course. Of course. I'm pleased to see I was remembered. Yes, you were remembered, but not as a deity.
I knew this was important to you, so I wanted to keep it safe. You will honor me if you continue to do so. You know, you have the voice of an angel. <laughs> Thank you. There's that of another, my sister Artemis. Thank you. Wait, you're the Greek god of music. I am. I was. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, it's all right, my child. Even through the centuries, music still echoes in my mind. The battles, heroes, bravery, love. To love a mortal was to watch the sun rise on a perfect day, only to mourn too quickly its setting into eternal night. Walk you and I to the gardens of old. Adorn thou my love in silver and gold. Drink of sweet wine as brave tales are told. Pray to the gods that we may love a thousand years. In a day. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very kind. It pleases me that you still enjoy my music, my children. It's just lovely. You know, Marcius once challenged me to a contest of music. Who is Marcius? Marcius was a satyr who believed he could play his flute as proficiently as I my lyre. After we both played, the muses declared the contest a tie, until I decreed that we both play and sing at the same time. <laughs> An impossible feat for Marcius. <laughs> Cook here. Scott here, sir. My panels are lighting up with malfunctions everywhere. Some of that corrosive junk definitely got into some of our systems. How bad is it? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm working out a way to rig up a ship-wide electromagnetic pulse to wipe it out all in one shot. Well, do what you can, Scotty. Keep me informed. Kirk out. Come. Captain, I thought now... Yes, Lieutenant? I thought now might be a good time for that little chat. Well, you're certainly persistent. I get that a lot. Give me one minute. I suppose you feel like you need to prove yourself being Starfleet's first onboard ship's counselor. <laughs> Not, I assume, unlike you, feeling like you had to prove yourself when you became captain at 33. The youngest starship captain in Starfleet history. 32. But close enough. <laughs> my mistake. Captain, part of my job is to assess the psychological condition of all on board, even alien life forms like Apollo, and make recommendations. And I'll bet you have one. Yes, I do. <laughs> I believe him. I believe that he is sincere about everything that he says. Whatever Apollo might have been once upon a time, his experiences since then have changed him. But changed him how? That's what I need to know before I could even consider granting his request. If I'm wrong, there's no telling what he's liable to do. But can't that be said about any one of us? In each of us, there's the potential to do great things, and to do dangerous and unpredictable things. How is Apollo any different? Well, the last time I checked, neither you nor I were ever worshipped as gods. I'd call that a big difference. He watched his friends die in that realm. And now he's here. Alone. And he's facing death himself. I truly believe that if we let the... 
Cook here. Spock here, Captain. I suggest you come to Rec Room 6 as soon as possible. Why? What is it? I think you should see for yourself. On my way. When Troilus, the young Trojan prince, rejected Achilles' lustful advances, he sealed the fate of himself and his city. Achilles arrived at Troy with 50 ships. His arrogance only matched by his rage. On that fateful day when Paris fired his arrow, it was I who guided it into Achilles' heel. Payment for the sacrilege of murdering Troilus, my son, on the very altar of Apollo. I'd like a word, please. Outside. What was that back there? Your idea of Olympian honor? You assured us you had no desire for worship. This is a pretty poor way of proving yourself worthy of our help. It is you who are not worthy. If you expect us to... <laughs> Is this a preview of what you intend to do to some unsuspecting planet? Well, you'll never get there, and you'll die alone. Is that what you want? I want what is mine. Humanity's worship and love. Humanity never loved you. They feared you. No god should survive on fear. Enough! Receive the wage of your blasphemy! You're going to break. Take him to sick bay. Tell McCoy to put him in restraints and sedate him if he has to. Bye, sir. Help Dr. McKenna. Come with me. All right, everyone, back to your stations. I guess Scotty was right. How so? <laughs> you were here, Spock. You saw what just happened. Yes, sir. While Apollo clearly had influence on those in the recreation room, I do not believe he intended to behave as he did. So you think he can't control it? He's been this divine parasite for so long that he just can't help himself, is that it? It has been my experience that humans, if not most beings, are unable to change their behaviors that are deeply embedded by choice. It is often forced by tragedy or outside intervention. Well, Apollo's therapy will not be at the expense of the crew of the Enterprise, I can promise you that. Apparently you can't teach an old god new tricks. Easy, Jim. He's restrained. He offered his wrists for the straps. What words can I offer, Captain? How about an explanation? Even a god can lose control. But you said you weren't a god anymore. I'm not. I'm a fool. I believed I could control the deepest ancient drives. By sheer force of my will. I see now I cannot. You will not help me then, will you? That little show of yours demonstrated exactly why I can't. Or should you? I'm sorry. So am I. Bye. 
but I don't see any alternative. Great! The organ in my body. That's what allows you to channel the power from that temple of yours. Yes, yes. But it serves another purpose. I'm listening. It's what converts mortal worship into energy. An energy that defies your understanding. I cannot control it as I first believed. But neither will I let it control me. If thine eye fends thee, then pluck it out. It's a quote from one of our greatest earth books. You want me to remove the organ? Yes. Can you do it, Bones? Well, I don't know, Jim. It's removing an organ is straightforward enough stuff, but considering... I accept any risk. My powers must be extinguished permanently if I am to survive. And no god, no one, should survive on fear. It's your call. Please, Doctor. I have faith in you. Captain's Log Supplemental. While ship surgeon McCoy performs elective surgery on Apollo to remove what the medical staff has deemed the God Organ, Mr. Scott has come up with a solution to our other problem. He and his engineering team begin within the hour. Sick beta, Captain Kirk. Kirk here, Bunt. Well, it's done, Jim. He's very weak, and I couldn't give you a guess about a recovery. But it's out. Understood. Join us in the briefing room as soon as you're able. Well, gentlemen, thanks to some skillful work by our good doctor, it is probable that Apollo no longer has the urge to thrive on the worship of others. I would therefore like to revisit the question of resettling him. Well, as with any surgery, we'll have to wait and see for a while, but I'm fairly sure he's harmless now. I believe Apollo's sincerity and intentions were demonstrated by his willingness to have an organ that he has relied on for centuries removed. Forgive me for saying so, gentlemen, but it seems like a lot of wishful thinking. We've got nothing but Apollo's word that removing that thing will make a wee bit of difference. And what would you suggest, Scotty? I don't know. I just feel that turning him loose somewhere is a certain disaster. So we still have no consensus. Bones, keep observing Apollo. Let me know if there are any changes. What's the status of your operation? Hey, we're ready to trigger the surge and sweep the ship's systems of that gunk. I will monitor Mr. Scott's progress from the bridge. How long? I can have it for you in 10 minutes. 10 minutes it is. Dismissed, gentlemen. Offering himself up for major surgery. Maybe he is sincere, Bones. Maybe. Maybe not. One thing's for certain, Jim. We can't come to a consensus soon. It won't matter. Rather than feel the warmth of the sun, Apollo will probably die at some point. Scott, the bridge. We're ready to begin. At your discretion, Mr. Scott. It's working, Captain. The pulse has so far eliminated 30% of the foreign substance. Well done, Scotty. Good riddance. Get off my ship! Bridge, I'm reading a buildup of electrostatic energy in your systems. I advise you to step away from your stations as a precaution while I try to compensate. Salute! Right. Tell McCoy we're coming! You've got the cop! Boat! Stay with me, Lieutenant. Stay with 
me. Put up a simulator. No, damn it. Doctor. No, get me the bypass. Bones. Apollo, I do not know what you hope to accomplish, but your recovery will require what little energy you have remaining. Removing that organ was supposed to render him powerless. How did he do that? I can't tell you that if I was from Mount Olympus myself, but he has more energy now than he did before the surgery. Something's spot. Is it possible that Apollo's species are able to draw power from something other than worship? Well, Apollo himself said that it was the organ that converted worship into energy. Life energy, he said. What are you getting at, Spock? Sacrifice? Why not? We've seen species throughout the galaxy that draw energy from many different sources. Now, if that's the case, why all this insistence on worship? Perhaps the gods assumed that since worship from humans empowered them, that that was the only thing that did so. Let's find out. How's he doing? He is fine. What you did, uh... That was really something. I don't fully understand it myself, but when I saw Lieutenant Uhura lying there and the grief on all your faces, I realized the universe was a better place with her in it. So you thought saving her would kill you? Well, not only did you not die, but we believe that the energy you gained actually came from your act of sacrifice. Do you mean to say that... All the centuries, demanding worship, forcing adoration, striking those who resisted, you never considered there may be another way, a better way. No, we did not. It is unlikely that sacrificial acts alone will provide you with the energy you once enjoyed. So, no more thunderbolts. But if you continue in this manner, it is conceivable that you could prolong your life indefinitely. We never knew. I'd like to see the senior officers in the briefing room, please. And keep an eye on him. <laughs> And that, gentlemen, is where we stand. I believe Apollo has demonstrated that he can live peaceably among humanoids as one of them. Our present course will take us past the Basilian Epsilon system. The second planet is a simple humanoid population. Apollo sacrificed himself to save one of our own. And now he's placed his fate in our hands. All those in favor of finding him a new home.
will be a new experience for you. And I am eager for it. Captain Kirk, you and your crew have my deepest thanks. None of this would have been possible without your enlightenment. Well, that's what we mortals do. You'll find the inhabitants of this planet to be a simple people at a cultural development stage similar to the Earth's 14th century. Which means you'll have plenty of opportunities to practice that newfound gift of yours. And I shall do so with all of my heart. I swear it. Thank you. Thank you. Godspeed, Apollo. Energize. Captain's log, stardate 6147.9. Mr. Scott reports that repairs have begun on the three affected power stations in the squadrant. They are scheduled to be back online in three weeks' time. On a personal note, it's good to have Lieutenant Uhura back on duty. Well, Dr. Leonard McCoy, surgeon to the gods. Who would have thought? Just an old country doctor like me. You must be quite proud. Darn tootin'. I may write a paper. I find it highly unlikely that Starfleet would allow such a paper to be published. Based on the highly sensitive subject matter, of course. Well, regardless, gentlemen, Apollo learned what it took our respective people centuries to discover. Self-sacrifice is the best way to live, benefiting both the giver and the receiver. And if I had an entire culture worshiping at my feet on bended knee, I'm not so sure I'd be in a hurry to change things either. But one thing's clear, they sure did love humanity. Apollo still does. Just something about us lovable humans, don't you think, Jim? Oh, now, don't pout, Mr. Spock. I'm sure they would have loved the Vulcans just as much had they landed there. What's not to love? I wasn't... Captain, I'll be at my station. Take us out of here, Mr. Sulu. Ahead, warp two. Aye, sir. Thank you. You can't know what this means. You've done my family a great service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.